This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Hi, and thanks for watching On Art. I'm Anu Subramanian. Tonight, photographer Aditya Arya shows us his collection of antique cameras, and we learn about the ways that Parsi culture has impacted not just our economy, but even our art. After that, we'll see a Bharatnatyam Kathak fusion performance that takes on a most unusual topic, drugs and HIV. This is On Art. three of Delhi's premier art institutions focused on celebrating Parsi culture. We went inside what makes this small population make such a huge impact. Parsi people make up a small fraction of the Indian population. There are only 70,000 Parsi men and women in the whole country. And yet, the lasting influence of these people is tremendous. Since a small group of Parsi men and women arrived in India 1,200 years ago, they have been influential in shaping the country's economy, art, music, even technology. Mumbai and Gujarat have the largest share of India's Parsi population. But recently, a series of exhibitions about Parsi culture were held across New Delhi at the National Museum, Indra Gandhi National Center for the Arts, and National Gallery of Modern Art. Each show honed in on a different facet of Parsi history or culture, shining light on Zoroastrian ancient traditions which began in Iran, and how those have bloomed in new ways here in India. Dr. Shernaz Kama curated the show at IGNCA and has been involved with all three of the exhibitions. One of the aims is to record a dying community, very frankly, because demographically we are declining very rapidly. Uh, the second point is to show the world what is a Parsi and what is a Zoroastrian. And India has got many, many minorities, uh, very few as small as the Parsis and very few as old as the Parsis. This is a Bronze Age civilization which has contributed and continues to contribute in the 21st century. At Indra Gandhi National Center for the Arts, their show, titled Threads of Continuity, put everyday life at the center, displaying traditional garments, instruments, books. It is the product of 20 years of oral tradition recording. So whatever you see in Threads of Continuity is actual live people in their homes and the objects you see are from their homes and they've been collected uh, because of our research in the oral tradition. The National Gallery of Modern Art introduced a crucial element of Parsi history to its audience, trading. For hundreds of years, Parsi traders along the coast have worked as seamen, facilitating trade between Britain and China. This deals with the visual language and the impact of culture and the cross-pollination of sensibilities that trade brings about. The Parsis that are known for their entrepreneurship and bringing in a great deal of philanthropy into the country. How and what truly happened during this 300 years of this phenomenal uh, encounter with China. The exhibition goes into Parsi people's bloody involvement in China's opium wars. And the National Gallery of Modern Art saw itself to be uniquely positioned to tell this story. It becomes far more important to have these exhibitions in Delhi where exposure on the community you know, and their contributions to the community is uh, rather uh, not so well known as opposed to Bombay where a larger cross-section of them live in. The exhibitions were bid farewell with an address about Parsi culture by writer Amitav Ghosh. Uh, 
the states of Malacca. His novel, called River of Smoke, focused on Parsi traders during the Opium Wars. This enormous influence, you know, the transformative influence which they had, uh, you know, on modern Indian public culture, modern Indian pop culture. In general, uh, you know, when Indian th Indians think of how modern India came into being, they think of it as a process of sort of uh, copying from the West, cricket. Parsis were um, instrumental in introducing cricket to India, you know. I mean, they were amongst the first to take up cricket. And I think they actually took up cricket in China. You know, the Parsis really in many, many different ways, many different fields, they really uh, helped to, uh, to create modern India. met legendary photographer Aditya Arya, who showed us around his collection of unique classic cameras and told us about what got him started in the business. Let's find out more, shall we? Being a little mechanically oriented, I started looking into the history of the cameras and how the cameras evolved and what led to what. So, you know, it's like a long journey, but it all started with, with the camera. Hi, I'm Aditya Arya. I'm a photographer. So I came into photography because I wanted to travel, visit places, see places, work with people. And photography was one genuine reason and uh, where somebody could pay you to do what you really wanted to do. And one thing led to another thing. From uh, travel photography, I moved into advertising photography. Shooting, portraits is, how does a photographer capture the essence of that personality? His technical finesse, his aesthetic finesse, and how there is something called spontaneity, whether he's been able to merge the technical, the spontaneity, and the aesthetic in the same picture. Stick around. On Art will be right back after a short break. 